Hey, and welcome back to Wednesday Weeknight Dinner here on Ingrediology. I'm Logan, and to those of you who are joining us live here on Twitch, Facebook, YouTube, I hope you're having a happy Wednesday. We're getting through the week all right. I have a nice menu planned out for you. We're gonna be using pears three different ways. Now, pears, I think, are the most underappreciated fruit. It's, I, I saw it in one of my culinary textbooks that I picked up at some point. It was, it said that pears in France are like apples in America. And I want to make pears I'll more tell like you that what? in America. So we're going to be doing three different dishes today. One is going to be featuring the Bosque pear, which we're going to be roasting and putting over a spinach salad with blue cheese and bacon. The second way we're going to be using our pears are with Asian pears, making a nice slaw for some mahi fish tacos. We're going to top them with chimichurri, serving them with toasted warm tortillas. And then for our dessert, we're going to be doing some poached Danjou pears in a red wine syrup reduction that we're going to serve a la mode. And if you don't know what a la mode means, that just is over ice cream. All right? But how's it going? First off, I, first off, it's not first off, but Betty, Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for gifting a sub to kick off the stream for me. I really appreciate you. Now, is this Spank My Betty? Because it says formerly known as Betty. And do you get banned on your other account? I'm wondering if that's what happened. Because if that's what happened, that, that's funny. I want to hear the story behind it. Dartholo, welcome to the stream. We got a bunch of people hanging out here. Snake Eye DIY. Shout out for Snake Eye, Snake Eye DIY. Go check out his channel on Twitch. There we go. Whew, sorry. I have to turn off the noise canceling on my headphones or it sounds like I'm talking in a bottle, like you're stuffed up. But, whew, much better. All right, guys, so how's everything going? What's up? Thanks for the bits. Yeah, oh, that was Saddle Alert Spot. Whoever doesn't appreciate pears can bugger off. You're damn straight about that, Darth Thalo. Pears are delicious. I think that was my favorite fruit growing up. I think before I had like mango, like mango is amazing and life-changing and probably sits at the top of my list. I have a mango smoothie probably six days out of seven here during the week. Hanging out on Facebook and YouTube. Thank you, Kevin. For those of you just joining us on Facebook and YouTube, welcome to the stream. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you're over on YouTube. Guys, we're working really hard on the YouTube videos we're putting out here nowadays, and we're seeing some good growth by doing some shorts and um, and just working on the on the After Effects stuff. It's just really cool. I, I'm just trying to build the audience over there. So if you haven't subscribed to us already on YouTube, why don't you go check us out? Okay, it is Betty. I thought it was you. I mean, who else? I've never met another Betty on Twitch, so figures. Same account, but Twitch locked me out till I changed my username. They said it was TOS after a couple of years. I was gonna say, you had it for a long time. I'm rebranding to Betty's Dungeon Adventures in a couple of weeks, heard that. So, formerly known as Betty is just a temporary placeholder before you get, is that gonna be like a D&D &D stream? I'm just going off the dungeon part of your name right here. Denvenator, what's up, Tanner? How you doing? I'm doing great, thank you, sir. We're, we're hanging out, cruising through the week. Got a great menu planned here, featuring pears for you, and fish tacos, and ice cream, and roasted salads with bacon. So, I hope you're excited for it. Okay, so it is gonna be in D&D stream. That's cool, Betty. I, I have never played D&D &D myself. I'm afraid I would get too deep into it. I, I have a tendency with games to just kind of get obsessed with them and learning the rules and playing them nonstop. And then it, it gets annoying for my family and people around me. And it's a, you know, it's a suck of my time right now. I don't have the time, don't have the time. Well, Remy boy, speaking of the reason why I don't have the time anymore, he's also doing well. He is this close to walking and maybe that close to talking. So we're, we're seeing a lot of growth here. He's going through, they call it a leap in like, I guess, pediatrician parlance. He like, some weeks they'll, they'll go like two or three weeks and stay about relatively the same. And then over the course of like one week, they'll, they'll like grow a little, or a couple of teeth will come in or, or they'll start talking. And so we think he's in the middle of a leap right now. Poll, so yes, uh, Snake Eye has this poll up here, everybody. So be sure you're checking out the poll if you're on Twitch joining us. Uh, do you think Logan likes lobster? So what do you think? Do you think I'm yay or nay on lobster? It's a good question. <laughs> Rock Lobster, what's up, Colonel Salty Dog? Good to see you. Thanks for coming out, my friend. Happy Wednesday to you. Wait until he walks, it's crazy. I know, he, he surprised himself this morning because I let go of his hands. Just all of a sudden, sometimes I was like, pa. And he thinks it's funny because he just immediately saw, starts falling forward. But he was able to keep himself up for like 
maybe a second and a half, two seconds possibly. And he was like, and surprised, and then he immediately fell over. <laughs> but he's so cute, man. I'm obsessed with him. And if you're if you're wondering like why we're not having the consistent weekly streams this combination of summer and uh, just being involved with that little boy, everybody. So my apologies for not going out last week. I did post a video on the YouTube last week, Shrimp Fra Diavolo or Diavolo or however you'd like to say it. I don't know which one's the American Vines version and which one's the correct way. I've seen it and heard it so many different times. But uh, yeah, a cool little bit of history. Uh, exclamation point YouTube down in the chat down there. You ever been to Red Lobster restaurants? I actually, Tanner, worked for the company that owned Red Lobster. So Darden Restaurants, um, Bill Darden, I think was his name, uh, started a, a restaurant called Froggy's. I think it was Froggy's. And after Froggy's, it was successful as a bar and restaurant. He started Red Lobster. And then from that little empire grew and grew came Olive Garden and Bahama Breeze and Capitol Grill. Um, well, where I worked, season 52, then Eddie V's, and oh my gosh, o not Ocean Prime. But they're, they're the largest restaurant corporation in the world. And I used to be a sous chef at uh, season 52. So that's uh, what I did years ago. That's how I ended up in Denver, opening up that restaurant. But yeah, I've been to a Red Lobster and uh, everything's in a microwave, everything. I, I, I had to go through training at Darden and so they have this section at corporate headquarters where everything's set up and they have a, a mock model of each one of the different brands of restaurants like around a gigantic food court and that's where the corporate chefs have working models of exactly what's available to their their cooks and their chefs in the kitchen so they like kind of like play it out cosplay if you will as a real restaurant to all the corporate people and uh everything goes into a microwave at red lobster there's very few things that don't utilize these like we call them magic chefs they're a combi oven so it's combination convection oven and microwave oven and it gets things done like super quick they use some of those but they also use just regular microwaves as well i don't i don't really go to red lobster i i don't i don't frequent it at all he stands and looks drunk stage now what Oh, yes, 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 Remy. Remy being in the drunk stage, yeah, his his hips keeps doing this. There's a lot of that before he goes down, but he's doing laps around the coffee table. He's able to, we got like an eight foot long coffee table here in the living room, and he's able to go down one side, make the little turn, that was a big, big progression, and then make the other turn, and now he's just walking around it. I used to, I, I was tempting him like uh, with cars, toy cars, or my phone, he loves my phone, to get him to like walk his way down the table. <laughs> uh, you're gonna have me talking about them for hours, guys. We're never gonna cook anything, and we really gotta get going. Sorry, I'm gonna clear off the board right here, and then we can start doing our actual recipe, what we came here to do today. Uh, cheers to everyone. I'm drinking a peach pale IPA this afternoon. You guys should pour yourselves a drink, maybe get yourselves a snack, and settle in here for a couple hours of fun cooking. How's the music for everybody? Are the levels okay? Do, do, do. Man, be careful that they sue us. <laughs> They're not gonna sue us. They are litigious, but I mean, what are they gonna say? You talk, you talk shit about us on your live stream? Okay. I mean, I did. You can replay the tape. I'll be in the meeting. It'll be any day now, I know. It really will be. All right, um, let's see. Sorry guys, just doing the, the check on the cams, making sure everything's up and running the way I want it to. So talking about the recipes that we got for this afternoon, uh, I'm sorry, one, one quick adjustment. I'm gonna take the music down in my ears. I think it's, oh no, that's. There we go, okay. Please ignore Steven meowing in the background. Oh, might want to turn the dolly on. There we go. All right, so as I told you before, we're gonna be making this roasted pear salad. These are Bosque pears. Now this kind of pear has a longer, thinner neck at the top and the browner, brownish skin. Ah! Sorry and the uh, brownish skin on the outside. Now they actually have a very high sugar content, 
but they're not the best just eating like an apple kind of pear. For that, I would pick a Donju pear, which is what we're gonna be poaching in red wine here in a second, but we'll talk about those when we get to that point in the recipe. Uh, on top of this salad, it's gonna be an arugula salad, okay? We're gonna be doing a little bit of blue cheese and some bacon. Ooh, always a great combination, right? And then we're gonna be making a simple lemon vinaigrette to go on top. So we've got a lemon, little olive oil, salt, pepper. It's that easy. It's that simple, all right? It's all that's going in this bad boy. So the first thing we need to do is get our pears cut up, de-seeded, de-stemmed. We're gonna lay out our bacon and our pears on a sheet tray, get them in the oven, and they gotta roast, okay? We already have the oven set to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. So um, I don't know. I didn't do the Celsius conversion before stream. I'm sorry, our European, New Zealand, Australian viewers, anybody outside of the US, right? Freedom units. Can you turn your voice all the way down and the music all the way up? Thanks. Yes, hey guy, I can do that. I can do that, I guess, sure. Oh, you go with pears today. Oh yes, Tanner, this is a pear day, baby. Is the bot spitting out the right thing? Okay, good, the bot's spitting out the right thing. So, let's get our boss pears out right here. <laughs> what knife do I want to use for this? I think I'm gonna do this, all right? So, taking your boss pear, we're just gonna quarter it. Now I try and line up the stem end and the, uh, I don't know what you call that, flower end of our pear. We're gonna go right in half and quarter it, all right? Quarter. And we have our seeds still in here. We have a stem. I assume that last part of the menu description should also be pears and not pars. Does it say pars? Oh no. Gosh darn it. Pars a la mode. Nope, that's right. It's pars a la mode. I'm just gonna stick by my mistake right here, okay? Just gonna own it. Pars a la mode. So making a diagonal cut into our pear, we're just gonna take out that little bit of a seed pod. You wanna do this, guys, because nothing ruins the salad more. Well, not more, but it does definitely ruin the uh, experience while you're eating the salad if you're also having to eat around seeds and stems at the same time, right? Tanner, do you have a favorite type of pear? Does anybody have a favorite type of pear? Do we have pear opinions? Oh, pear? No, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not even going to go there. Now, if you plan on roasting these pears a little later, it's totally fine to take and put these in a little bit of acidulated water. And what I mean by acidulated water is water with a little bit of acid in it. The acid I would use would be lemon juice. Get that last little bit of seed out of there. So we're gonna, I'm sorry, not lemon juice, lime juice. We're gonna squeeze one lime. Ooh, he was a little yucky. Hey, baby boy, you look cute in your shorts. All right. I like pears which are crunchy and a little bit sour. What are those called? I mean, I think that's just called an underripe pear. Um, but I think the most common one you're gonna find at the grocery store is gonna be like a Donju pear. That's what pretty much every grocery store carries is that. Or a, um, there's also Bartlett pears, which look fairly similar, but sometimes have a reddish hue on the skin on the outside. All right. After we get these all quartered up and de-seeded, we're gonna put them into a large bowl, everybody. I like pears when they're turned into booze. Now, isn't there a hard pear cider, Snake Eye? Am I imagining that? I mean, we call them liver pears. I don't know how you call it. Liver pears. I've never heard the term liver pear. Hey, chef, your little buddy is watching. Hey, little buddy. I saw him come into the kitchen here briefly. Hi, Remy. Hi. How's Dada on the television? What's Dada doing on the TV? Oh, my gosh. Okay. Big bowl.
Medium bowl, that's what I meant. In go our pears. And then we're gonna put a little bit of olive oil, salt, and pepper on those. All right, there we go. That's the other angle I was looking for. Yes, they are brown inside. Brown, brown inside and not on the outside, Tanner. I have a recipe for pear salad, by the way. Absolutely, Tanner. Tanner, you're part of our Discord, aren't you? Feel free to drop that in our Discord if you'd like. So, olive oil, two tablespoons, one ounce. Boom, boom. Let's hit it with some salt. Maybe another pinch of salt. And there's some pepper. Guys, you would be surprised at how beautifully black pepper goes with pears. Good. Lose one immediately. Probably. I was thinking wine. Oh, Snake Eye, I just saw your message about the pears. I was like, Snake Eye never replied about the cider. You did. I'm just bad of bad at managing even a chat room of five people. Guys, I gotta be honest with you, I haven't posted this recipe to the website yet because this pear thing, it kind of struck me as an inspiration. Um, two weeks ago, I was literally flipping through my professional chef book and uh, just trying to brainstorm and come up with ideas and everything. And I came across the pear section, read the whole thing. I was like, oh my gosh, that's so right. I love pears so much. I should be highlighting this. That'd be a great topic. So um, I, I tested this out last Friday on our neighbors and they came over and I made this for them. I made some adjustments to the slaw recipe already, but then today, whatever I make here uh, is gonna be the locked in final recipe that I'll eventually post to the website, okay? So you will be able to make this at home using ingrediology.org, but just not yet. It's gonna be it's gonna be out by the time the YouTube video's up. So probably in like three, three to four weeks. Whew, okay, now down here, we're gonna lay this out on our sheet tray, which I've covered with a wire rack and some parchment paper. I've got a half sheet tray right here. Gotta work clean today. We're doing a lot of stuff. There's gonna be a lot of things going on in the kitchen, so we need to make sure that we are not making too big of a mess for our lovely dish crew, who we love very much. That's Kevin and Megan. Steven is on one today, guys. I'm sorry if you can hear her in the background. She is uh, meowing up a storm. Pretty similar, but with brie instead of blue cheese and walnuts and some watercress. Ooh, hell yeah, Tanner. Hell yeah. That sounds awesome. I like the brie. I'm always a fan of brie. All right, pears laid out. Now we just need to roast them. 375 degrees on the oven, everybody. Ooh. I'm gonna try and not make you sick. I do it okay? Brie Larson? Yeah, all the Brie's. All the Brie's are good in my opinion. Never met a Brie I didn't like. Ooh, I should probably get the grill turned on everybody. Probably. I mean, I definitely should. We're going to be taking our fish and cooking it this afternoon on my pellet grill, the wood fire grill. But I'm going to do that right after we get our bacon in the oven because I can't forget to do the bacon at the same time. This is thick cut bacon. So it's, uh, it's gonna take a minute. <laughs> Let's 
Let's see. That sheet tray's already taken up. How about we use this sheet tray? No, I'm gonna use the other one. Sorry, everybody, for the noise. We're just gonna simply lay this out. Now, remind me of what is Brie Larson. Would you turn that on, please? Um, 400, please. Awesome. Thank you, Kevin. What's Brie Larson in? I'm terrible with pop culture references and celebrities. That's all in Megan's head. I carry none of that. Like, Brie Larson, I know that's a famous person's name, but I couldn't pick her out of a crap. Really, I couldn't. You could put a gun to my head. Wash after you handle your bacon, sir. Uh. For everybody just joining us, welcome to Wednesday weeknight dinner here on Ingrediology. My name's Logan. I am your chef and host out here in the beautiful Denver, Colorado. We are doing a study in pairs this afternoon. I wanted to highlight three different dishes in which you could use pears at home. They are all made for simplicity and being easily executable for you to make in your kitchen. These ingredients are not off the wall or crazy, although I will be honest with you, I did have a bit of trouble finding our Asian pears this afternoon. We're gonna be roasting our Bosque pears that we just put in the oven, if you saw that. That's gonna be go on top of a arugula salad with a very simple lemon vinaigrette, blue cheese, some bacon chopped up nicely. Then we'll move on to mahi fish tacos with chimichurri sauce, and we're just gonna blend up over here in the food process but the pear inside that dish is gonna be the Asian pear, which is gonna be sliced thinly and then julienned, like little matchsticks is another way you might have heard that called, and put that into the slaw. That's gonna be in the tacos with some avocado to top it off. And for dessert, we're having poached Danjou pears in a red wine syrup. We're gonna do that a la mode, so over ice cream. Steven, I'm about to lock you upstairs. For real. For real though. Do, do, do. Let's see. Let's see. So bacon's in, pears are on. Why don't we start with our slaw next? Let's go over our slaw ingredients, everybody. We have down on the board. Some cilantro, cabbage, lime, green onion, carrot, and then of course our Asian pears, which we need to go grab real quick. I just keep a damp paper towel over top of my herbs and, and vegetables here before we start the stream. It's something I used to do in my classes that I taught IRL for years uh, because it keeps, the, it keeps them looking nice and fresh and things dry out rather quickly up here in Colorado, to be honest with you. So we've got all this bountiful produce that we now need to turn into a delightful cabbage slaw. So the most important tool that we're going to be using here this afternoon is going to be our mandolin. So mandolin, I describe this as the most dangerous musical instrument you can find in the kitchen. This is board with like the knife in the middle and everything. Now it comes with these little inserts that will take and julienne things for us. So I'll show you how to install this. We're gonna use the medium size teeth today. What is up, Negan? Hey, how are you, my dear? I hope your summer's going well. Can we get a shout out for Chef Negan here in chat, please? What's new, Negs? What have you been up to? I know I've been a complete stranger. I've not been anywhere and please, don't be offended, I've not come and said hi often, I've not said hi to anybody. So, uh, I hope you're doing well though. I hope that everything's great. Oh, hey, I'm so offended. I bet you are offended. Good. You know what? I rescind my apology. I am glad. <laughs> doing good, homie. How is the baby? Baby's growing like a weed. He's nine months old. Megan keeps saying he's been out longer than he was in. So that's a milestone, but he's he's this close 
to walk in and this close to talking right now. I swear to God, it's gonna happen any day by the end of the summer. So uh, doing a lot of that, 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 discovering his tongue and then walking around the coffee table and stuff. Dude, I, I know, I know. It is, it's so exciting. I am, I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled. So we're we're keeping the boat going over here on the live stream and everything and and doing this on still doing this on Wednesdays. I dropped my schedule back down to Wednesdays after taking three months off when he was first born. And uh, now we're we're just chilling. Things have been good. The summer's been great. We've been making tricks trips with him. He had his first airplane flight, all that jazz. So yeah. So how are, how's Jeff? Are you in where are you right now? Like I said, I'm, I've really not been keeping up. So, are you down in Florida? Are you up in Massachusetts? Are you uh, back in LA? What's up, girl? In Mass, going to Cali next month. Heard that. That's awesome. Then Texas in November. Everyone's going to Texas. You got Steve, you got Kate, you got you, you got Zero, you got Nikki. Damn, Texas. I need to go to Texas. Sadly, I don't think I'll be making it down the Texas way anytime soon. I'll go here. Yeah, that's good. So with our mandolin, you see these screws here and here? We're gonna take and we're gonna insert teeth up. Well, we would. We gotta loosen both the screws. We're gonna insert these teeth up to fit into our mandolin. You guys thinking about TwitchCon in October? You know, I was for a while, like definitely last year at this point, Negan, I would, I was gung-ho, fired up, ready to go, but um, I've just, I've, I've been focusing so much more on the YouTube side of things and the live streams have become so much more of a, more of a production uh, and with less frequency. You know, I just feel disconnected from the community right now. So I don't think that I will be going to TwitchCon, unfortunately. I'm sorry. You know I'd love to take you out for some drinks in person, go to a restaurant, you know, but not San Diego this year, I don't think. It's just we got we got other things going on in the family and trips we need to take and, you know, the money can be used elsewhere. That's not so sad. I am sad. I want to see my friends. But, yeah. Are you... Guess, oh, Negan, if you come to Denver and you don't hit me up, then I will be offended. Please, please do. All right, so you guys see how those teeth kind of stick up above the blade right there? That's how our mandolin works. So, what you gotta do now Is get your pairs going. Note to self, offend Logan. Offende. It's the French proper verb is offende. Ugh. It's got a mind of its own. I hit the button while I was in my pocket. You get these nice julienne strings of Asian pear. I'll take the couch. Thank you, Vince. Negative. We got way better than a couch for you. We got a whole guest room. We got two. You got options, baby, out here in Colorado. Now, I'm just going down so far to where I know the core of the pear is going to be and stopping at that point, everybody. All right? That's what you need to do. What is making your camera move? <laughs> so, uh, Negan, I'll show it to you here. Let's go to six. So I have this little thing. You see this dolly? Got three wheels. I can adjust the angle of these two front wheels right here. So turn them to create different angles of arc. And then I got an iPhone hooked up with OBS camera. Do you like it? I like it. That was that was a treat. Treated myself back here at the beginning of the year. Beginning of the year, maybe like March. I think I got it in March. Shit, I need to get moving on these Asian pears or they're just gonna oxidize to hell. 
Thank you, thank you. I think it's pretty cool too. I was very happy with this purchase. And you know, you can look into camera tracks and whatnot for DSLRs. I saw some, who had this? Oh, one of the other bigger food and drinkers. Stacy Roy, that's her name. Stacy Roy had this uh, in her studio. And uh, I just thought it was the coolest shot when she was like showing off food and put together Legos and stuff like that, that I had to get one. But when you look at DSLR tracks, they're like, three four five six hundred dollars and they go up from there you know you can buy as expensive as a dolly as you want this was 70 bucks 70 dollars and it's got a little remote with it and you can adjust the angle so you're not just stuck with one track now the one thing is it doesn't have an auto run feature so it won't just continuously go the speeds are a little you know i have three speeds and it's adjustable but it's like super slow fast and really fast so, you know, I loaf it. It is an RC car. That's what you're right. You're absolutely right. All right. Have a good stream, sir. See ya. Oh, Tanner. I'm sorry. I missed that. I apologize. Maybe Amsterdam. Let's see. Well, Tanner, if you're still here hanging out, I hope you have a good rest of your week, sir. Thanks for joining us. I appreciate you. All right. I've got our... Asian pears all shredded julianne right here not all shredded that was one pear out of the four maybe i should just do two that i'm gonna be doing but i'm getting some lime juice in here on them because if you can see the pears are starting to turn a little bit brown just being exposed to the oxygen 70 is great for it i know right it was a steal So I need to get some acid on these real quick so that they don't brown out. Guys, if you're just joining us here for our Wednesday weeknight dinner, we're doing a study in pears. So we're doing pears three different ways. One on a salad, one in a slaw, and a couple poached in red wine. Now you should always use the guard. I don't use the guard because I'm bad. Okay. Snake Eye, what have you been up to, my brother? What's new and special in your summer? Oh God! Okay, so we got some lime juice. I'm gonna do one more pair, right? One more pair. Now, Asian pears definitely have a crunchier texture. They're, they're much firmer, closer to like an apple when ripe than say what you might traditionally think of as, as like a ripe Donjou pear. A little firmer in flesh, which is gonna be perfect when paired with the cabbage and the carrots that we're using here in today's slaw. Are you gonna be around after stream for a quick call? Uh, probably not tonight, Roland. I gotta be honest with you, just, you know, with the baby and everything. But why don't we set up something for tomorrow or Friday? Yeah, I'm free the rest of the week, so just text me. You got my number. <laughs> 3D printing and CNC stuff. Oh, hell yeah. You had a, did you always have a CNC machine? I don't recall you having that. That's a cool piece of tech. You know, I mean, I'm over here bragging about my gimbal, but you got a CNC machine. Now, I know what a CNC machine is, 
but I don't know what C and C means. What does C and C stand for? Are you related to exclamation point Elon in chat? And I'm better looking than Elon Musk. Not richer, which, you know, pushes up his attractiveness level quite a bit, but without the money. Without the genius. Just what if Elon Musk was a regular guy, just a, just a chef, living in Denver, Colorado? Had a YouTube channel. You know, like so many do. Ah. Uh, Pila, time for some carrots. Welcome into the stream, though, Cocaine Dawkins. It's good to see you. My name's Logan, not Elon. Fortunately, uh, I am a chef out here in Denver, Colorado. And you're joining us for our Wednesday weeknight dinner, where we are using pears today. Three different ways. Tacos, salad, and as dessert, a la mode. All right. Now, I just used... Pardon me. I just used the... Um, mandolin for our pears. I typically don't prefer to use a mandolin for carrots because carrots are pretty hard and when you slip, you slip right into the blade. So, but it's gonna look better. It is gonna look better. I actually just use the guard, you know, like what it's for. Fine, I guess I will. Shit. Go Broncos, baby. Uh, go Avalanche. They won the cup. Elon is overrated. Atrionics, how you doing, my dear? Good to see ya. Hello, been a while. Been crazy busy with life. About to head to bed. Just wanted to pop in and say hi. I hope you and the family are well. Atrionics, thank you. Atrionics, one of our very first followers over here on Twitch, and I, I'm glad everything's going well for you. Our family is doing great, and we're, you know, we're just uh, making it through the summer. Keep an eye on the baby boy. But sleep tight. I hope you're, hope you're uh, feeling better, and uh, we'll talk soon. Okay, so actually using the guard here. Cleaning out the teeth, of course. You always gotta clean your teeth, okay? Mm, mm, mm. There we go. It's all messed up. It's gonna cut better. Pears will come out cleaner. Won't be all gummed up with our Asian pear. Okay, let's get this installed back in here. Patrick Roy was the best abs goalie. That's not who was uh, playing this time for him. They had some different goalie. I can't tell you I'm the most dedicated abs fan, but I did hop on the bandwagon this year. My team's really the uh, Pittsburgh Penguins. See what I mean? Can you imagine doing that without a guard? All right, we got shredded carrots, everybody. They got to go into our Asian pear slaw. Oh, yeah, thanks for your goalie. As a Caps fan, we say thanks. Did they trade him to the Capitals immediately? Son of a bitch. Doing good, happy you guys are well. Give Megan my best. I certainly will, Atrionics. Clean as you go. Like a trash bucket. Why don't I have a trash bucket after all these years? Here, that's this bowl. I used to. All right, carrots are shredded. Let's get this cabbage cut down.
Oh, Roland, if you're still here with us uh, about calling and everything, I will tell you, I, I am on Mountain Time still, of course, and um, I am free between 11 and 2 every day. That's like my time that Grammy is guaranteed to have the boy. So that would work best if that's okay with you. <sighs> Perfect. Heard. Thank you. All right, we're just gonna slice this up thinly. We're gonna do about half of a head of cabbage. like one of the last things. Those pears are getting so brown. All right, I'll text you tomorrow just to make sure. Thank you, sir. No more teeth after a while either. Wait, I like to clean my teeth with a cup or two of white vinegar. Just swish it around for a few minutes and no more stains and no more teeth after a while either. Yes. I, I heard that lime juice is terrible for your teeth. Like it just strips the enamel right off of it. I think I told a, an assistant, like a dentist tech one time that uh, I take a little bit of lime juice and water and I would swish it around before, before like an IRL cooking class just to really kill anything in my mouth and all the, uh, ba any bad breath I had, I would, I'd swish lime juice. And she told me to stop doing that immediately because that was terrible. So I did. Boy, you so ugly, I bet they have to have a hang a pork chop around your neck just to get the dog to play with you. Well, if that would work, Randy, if you come play with me, I will hang a pork chop around my neck. I haven't talked to you in a couple of weeks, my friend. How you doing? I hope that you're well. Uh, now, where where's the Halo time? Okay, you gonna be on tonight? I might be on tonight if you're getting on. Gotta get get to Haloing with the boys. <laughs> and this music is putting me to sleep. Is it doing the same to you guys? Monday will be my first day off in two weeks. Sounds like Jason. Been working like crazy, man. Well, I hope you're getting, taking time to relax and enjoy your summer as well, buddy. It's all good. It's all good. We've been busy too. Uh, we're not going to be traveling well, I think we might take a mountain trip, probably, at some point during the summer. But we are, we're not we're not traveling until, like, September again. We're staying at the house. We did we got some stuff out of the way early in the summer, and now we're just looking to, to be in chill mode. M. Luck, can we get a shout-out for M. Luck, please? How you doing? Good to see you. Happy Wednesday. Guys, go check out her channel out here on Twitch, a fellow Twitch food and drink streamer. Ah... Oh. Anybody join us on YouTube or Facebook? Guys, it's a live stream. You can talk to me at the same time while this is going on. I got chat right here. Now, I know I'm not great about it, but I've not heard anything out of Facebook or YouTube today. And by the way, if you guys haven't followed me on YouTube yet, I think you should. I mean, obviously I'm biased and everything, but I've been putting in a lot of work here on the editing and the, uh, the creation of a better channel. Doing shorts. I take all these live streams, so all the footage that comes out of like these live streams that I, I run, I record all that and then I chop it down into shorter videos. So like the next video after chicken and waffles, which I'm working on right now, will be um, this three pair dinner, you know? And so this is, this is the long version that's gonna be going on and getting posted. Supposed to be like 97 on Saturday, gonna take a case of beer and sit in the pool all day. Hell yeah, good for you, Randy. Man, 97, down in the Carolinas, just humid as hell. <sighs> Happy Wednesday, doing a lot better. 
now it's cooling down. Yeah, I mean, you're over in Europe, Luck. I do know that. So you guys are having quite the heat wave right now. I hope you're, I hope you're staying cool and staying safe. There were some wildfires too. None of that was affecting you, was it? I hope not. Oh, back down here on the board, we got some uh, green onions. We're making pear slaw for our mahi fish tacos right now, everybody. If you're just joining us here on Ingrediology. It's hot down here. Hot air. I saw it was 115 degrees in like northern Texas the other day. No fucking thank you. Europe, Netherlands is insane. Thank God I got air conditioning last year. Yeah, thank God, Adrian. That's That'd be awful without it. There are so many old homes that don't have air conditioning. It's shocking to me. And people are like, yeah, well, we bought this uh, classic house in like downtown Seattle and we don't have air conditioning. I'm like, and you paid $2 million for it? We'll buy a house with air conditioning for multiple millions of dollars. Get the hell out. You gotta be off your rocker. A little salt, a little pepper. We're just gonna get this all tossed together. We should put in just a, a touch of olive oil. A touch, like I said, just a touch. And us Dutchies are not used to heat. Yeah, what are y'all doing? Dutchies. I've never heard the Dutch called Dutchies. That's cute. Reminds me, there's a dish out here in the U.S. called Dutch Babies. And it's like an apple fritter. Makes me think of Dutch Babies. Maybe a potential menu item here at some point. Hey, some of us like our old homes with no AC. Sweat drips from everywhere. Hifre! What are you doing, you old son of a bitch? It's good to see you. Thanks for not calling me back. The fuck? But how you doing? How you doing? Is, is the kiddo here? Like, we haven't talked in months, man. Lurking over here on my YouTube stream. But yeah, man. How, how's, uh, how's Mac? How, how's everything going back, uh, back in Ohio? I don't want to dox you too much. There's a lot of people in here, okay? I'm kind of a big deal. I might dox you. Ooh, I've rolled up a Dutchie or two. Uh, I have to cop to that as well, Randy. I have to cop to that. Sweating. Oh shit, I did not call you back. I'll call you now and talk live. Yeah, sure. Well, don't don't call me now because I have both my phones in use on the stream presently. We got we got the dolly cam down here. Check this out. Oh hell yeah. And then we've got our gimbal cam up here. These are both iPhones, that and that. Man, I got a lot to tell you, dude. We got a lot to catch up on. Please do give me a call. Just not right now. Oh, <sighs> Alrighty. Slaw is finished, everybody. We got our beautiful Asian pear slaw ready to go on top of our mahi mahi fish tacos. We're gonna toss this in the cooler. Just to keep it nice and chill. Why don't we give our uh, bacon and pears a look see? All right, well, the bacon's burned, so that's good. I know the audio's out of sync between the iPhone. Don't tell me. Pears still need to go, though. All right. Beep. Actually, no, I'll sound like a fool.
Oh, hell yeah. See, I did burn the bacon, everybody. I got a cop to burn the bacon. That ain't good. So, I'm gonna toss in a new tray. That's my promise to you. New tray going in here. Gonna have to take two steps forward and one step back. Those pears all still have probably 20, 25 minutes left on them. You gotta cook the pears until they start getting a little brown on the tips, and then the flesh on the interior will get you know how an onion gets translucent when you when you cook it? It like goes from being raw and opaque, like an onion, and then it gets kind of, not clear, but like a stained glass window? We're looking for something similar in the pear. The, it, the texture will look different because all the sugars inside of the flesh have caramelized, all right? So that's, that's the stage we're looking for. Crunchy bacon. Logan is human. What? Pass the duchy to the left-hand side, my friend. And you call yourself a professional. I still eat that bacon, honestly. Some of you guys are savages. Some of you guys, yeah, you're right. I, I'm not. I, I'm embarrassed by my bacon right now. I'll be honest with you about that. Oh, roll that up. That can go over in our trash bin right there. And then let's lay out four more slices of bacon. And this time I'll put a timer on it. Our freezer's leaking. Goddamn freezer. Putting one. We need to change the flanges on the bottom of the freezer. So. <sighs> Owning a house, man. <laughs> we already spent like a thousand dollars this week on a plumber coming out and doing something else. So I'll probably just end up installing those flanges myself. But I looked them up online and it's still gonna cost us like $150, 200 bucks maybe with shipping for the flanges to get them from Whirlpool. It's a racket, I tell you. Then you gotta hire somebody to come out and do it. I've watched enough maintenance people do them in restaurants. I think that I can handle installing some flanges by myself. We would all eat that bacon. How could I not be savage? My name is Randy. Adulthood, fun times. I know, Atrionics. Uh, responsibilities, home ownership, taxes. New set of bacon going down. Just four pieces. We're not going too overboard, all right? We're gonna put this in for like 12 minutes. No, let's do it for 15. Hey Siri, set a timer for 15 minutes. Okay, good, good. Huh. I had to replace an AC this summer. That was 7K I didn't plan on. Jesus. Uh, yeah, we did We did something around 2K when we had an AC issue like earlier in the year. Our heater motor went out back in like March. Oh my God. I did make good use of the heat waves and manhandled my freezer and fridge into the garden. Free defrost mode. Oh, interesting. But you, you took it outside? I mean, I guess, like what else are you gonna do? You're gonna put towels or anything? You can't do that. So yeah, you're right. Free defrost mode. It's finally hot enough. Ah, oh, cheers to you as well, Randy. I have not, I've been ignoring my beer, all right? So we need to fix that. I'm just tracking this water from underneath the fridge. Everywhere everywhere okay we can get rid of the mandolin don't go storing that in the sink everybody because whoever's after you is definitely going to cut themselves don't ever store anything sharp of any kind in soapy water just a little tip for you no water on the kitchen floor it was awesome hell yeah we have to with the flanges being like off with the fridge and everything I have to get in there about every month and take a chisel and chisel like an inch of ice off the bottom because it eventually won't close because the ice gets so thick. So to chisel that out and so before it has a chance to melt, I knock it all onto towels and then I just throw it in the sink. That's how I deal with it. I think Logan burnt the bacon so he could have more bacon because bacon is life. I, I already tossed the bacon, but bacon is life. Have you guys been watching Ted Lasso? Anybody here? Yes, no on Apple TV. There's a character in there who always is saying, football is life. That's what it made me think of. 
Football is life, coach. <laughs> What's his name? Danny Rojas. Danny Rojas. Oh, Danny Rojas. I'm very careful with the sharp stuff. It's either being used or washed or guard back on. Hey. Oi! Oi! Are we doing an Irish Kate impression? Or are we doing more Ted Lasso references? I'm, I don't know. I can't tell. Oh, guys, I broke my vacuum sealer. Like, months ago. I dropped it right out of the top of the pantry. Some of you may have been here when that happened. That was a disappointing day. But it just reminds me that I need to replace it. Ted Lasser, okay. <laughs> Had a coworker drop a knife on his foot. Not I. Uh, I have the same horror story that in culinary school, uh, student. We we had these big, heavy German knives. They were Messermeisters, and um, he dropped it on his foot, and uh, it went through his shoe into his foot, and yeah, it wasn't pretty. So. After that, I wore steel toe boots in the kitchen for like a decade. Just always ordered kitchen shoes, the no slips, but they, they always had steel toes. You can find varieties of them. All right, peeps. I think we need to throw together a chimichurri. So, let's go set up over for the chimichurri sauce. Same. Hell yeah. Yeah, most people don't know about the steel toes in the kitchen. More people should. Okie dokie. Taking it over here to our food processor, everybody. We're going to be throwing in some cilantro, as well as some parsley, red wine vinegar, cumin, some oregano. And that's going to be our quick chimichurri, okay? I've already done this here before on stream. Uh, we made a chimichurri when we did Argentinian steak. Back, I don't know, back in, say, March. But I love chimichurri on my tacos. Think of it like a South American pesto. That's what I always say. South American pesto. Steven, if you don't stop crying, I'm going to jerk a knot in your tail. How about that? <laughs> All righty. So we've got one bunch of cilantro. And then two small bunches of parsley right here. This is not flat leaf Italian parsley. You can totally use that if you prefer to, if that's available. They only had curly parsley today when I went to the grocery store. So here we are, okay? Now, back over the food processor, we're going to add all of our herbs. Let's line these up in here. This can go in. Stems and all, everybody. And then we have our red wine vinegar, which is almost most assuredly sealed. We're going to put in a couple ounces of that. Let's call that two ounces, quarter of a cup. Then uh, two healthy pinches of sal. Some ground cumin. Cumino. You got to do the sound effects, everybody. Got to do the sound effects, okay? Red chili flakes. Then olive oil. We need olive oil. I know, I know, like meow, meow. Shoes in the house, heathen. Yeah, we gotta do the shoes in the house. Wish we didn't. It's a hard habit to break. All right, somebody needs, uh, I'm gonna go beat my cat. What the hell are you doing? Go. Get out of here. I'm gonna lock you upstairs. Okay, so let's clean this up. I see how messy my house is behind the scenes. You're welcome. All right. And on we go. We're just going to continue to puree this, everybody, until it is a smooth consistency. Well, not exactly entirely smooth. We're not looking for, like, an oil that's been infused with herbs. But uh, a little bit of chunk is fine. Like I said, pesto. Pesto is the consistency you're looking for. Finely, finely chunked.
Thank you. Luck, you are absolutely right. You're 100% correct. Like, I see streamers who are wearing sandals or barefoot, like you said, all the time, and they're cooking in the kitchen. And that, that grosses me out. It's not only gross, it's actually extremely unsafe. Because if anything like we were talking about earlier happens, you're real screwed. It's cute. It's not cute. Because you know why it's not cute? Because anytime I have to go back and get audio for like a YouTube video later and she's meowing, I have to scrap that whole section. There's no way to take her out of it. it drives me crazy. Imagine grease splatter. I know. You ever like gotten up on a Saturday morning and cooked bacon with like your shirt off or something? That'll teach you the lesson right there. This has got to go for a minute, everybody. I do apologize. But you're on a cooking stream. I mean, you gotta expect kitchen noises on a cooking stream. I only cook bacon with my shirt off on Wednesdays. <laughs> Why? You know what? I don't even want to know. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> all nice and scraped up you know this still looks a little chunky I think I need more olive oil a little bit more olive oil so you mean you cook your you cooked bacon with your shirt off today then snake up that's what you're saying A little bit more. That, that's fair snake. I, I kind of want to know. I want to know a little bit. Knife, knife in the sink, so everybody knows. We got our chimichurri sauce out, ready to go. Now we're gonna have to uh, trim up some mahi mahi. What do you say? Actually, we're gonna do our donju pears first. Ugh. Wonderful chimichurri sauce. Get a spoon shot of this. There we go. All right, that's gonna go off to the side, everybody. And now we need to get started on the Donju pears. These are the pears that we're gonna be poaching in the red wine. I've got two bottles 
of Beaujolais wine. We've got three of our Donjou pears right here. Beep. And these, it's a really simple recipe, everybody. It is literally red wine, sugar, pears. That's it. Keeping it simple. Don't be slipping. Don't be slipping. Ay, ay, ay. Now I told you we need to make our water a little bit acidic. Now I have this gigantic Cambro. Hey Bob, welcome into the stream. Blob, happy Wednesday to you. Good to see you. I think I said Bob at first. Wednesday is hump day, so which is the day bacon is statistically least likely to splatter, therefore the best day to make bacon with your shirt off. Makes sense, that checks out. You know, that, that seems logical to me. So I have this gigantic Cambro of water, everybody, because I'm going to be taking my pears. You can just use a bowl at home, whatever. Um, but after we peel our Donjou pears, they're going to immediately go in here into our acidulated water to keep them from oxidizing. You saw earlier how our Asian pears turned a little bit brown because they were sat out on the countertop without any lime juice on them. Well, that was my mistake. So we're going to make sure we get ahead of it this time. A little bit of lime juice, a lot of water, pears go in there, okay? <laughs> Okay, that's enough. We've got our two pairs. Plus one equals three. We're just going to start peeling them, guys. Very simple. A little Beaujolais wine, which is slightly sweet in the first place. Now, we're going to be adding a whole cup of sugar, white granulated sugar, to our wine today in our sauce pot. And once that's up to a simmer, then we're gonna drop in our Donjou pears. The pears themselves, after having peeled, as, peeled them as I am right now, uh, we're gonna take and uh, cut them in half and remove the stem and then the seed pot all the way up through, okay? Because just like with our Bosque pears that we're cooking, you don't wanna eat the seeds. You don't wanna have the seeds and stems. Like with the Bosque pears for the salad or other things I can think of. No seeds, no stems. dig out some of those brown pieces right there. There we go. Beautiful little pear. Oh, speaking of our bacon, that's the timer for the bacon, everybody. So let's get that out of the oven. Mm, I'm going to give it like another four minutes. No. Two and a half minutes. Hey, Siri, set a timer for two and a half minutes. Okay. Two and a half minutes. The bacon is not quite done yet. Mm -hmm. I can get these peeled in two and a half minutes. That's the race, everybody. Anybody got trips or plans coming up here for the rest of the summer? Like I said, we've done most of our traveling that we're going to do. We might take a day out in the mountains, but just for like a weekend trip or something. Then uh, early September, we're gonna be going back to my mom's lake house. Keeping it close to home until then, though. Ugh. I am le naked. <sighs> so we just have them. And into the water they go.
Now, I am going to be using a little bit of... It's a little specialized piece of equipment. I, I don't know how many of you might have them at home. More of you might have this than you might first imagine, but it is the Melon Baller. Now, mine has this little fluted, scalloped tip here on this end. Kind of like a spork. It has a spork end, and then it has a regular Melon Baller over here. What I'm going to do... I'm going to take the melon baller and we're just going to dig right where I know the seeds are. Turn it, pop out the seeds, and then back into the water we go. Just worrying about the seed pod right now. Que What's going on? Hey, unknown bark! How are you, everybody? Happy Wednesday to you. Thanks for being on stream. Oh, that was my two and a half minutes on the bacon. Bacon first, guys. Sweet baby bacon. Our pears, to check on those, aren't quite soft yet. Like I said, we're looking for this flesh to turn color from a very raw white, which is already on its way to doing, uh, to start leaking sugars. Does that make sense? So if you're just joining us, these Bosque pears, which I just showed you in the oven, those are gonna be for the salad. We're doing an arugula salad with bacon and blue cheese and a light lemon vinaigrette, and then we're gonna to top it off with these. Just, it has salt and pepper oil on these Bosque pear quarters, roasted at 400 degrees, I'm sorry, 375 degrees Fahrenheit for you guys. Hi, Lugan. <laughs> Bark, I never got to uh, talk to Kate the other week. We tried uh, hitting each other up and, you know, it just it skated by. I, I think we just got both so busy there after, like, Tuesday or whatever. Oh, like you're drooling. But I miss you guys. I hope you're well. I hope you're both doing great down in Tejas. What's new? What have you been up to, my friend? Have you guys taken any more trips? Seen any more of the great America that Kate has yet to discover? And Kate Sarah, what are you up to? I just put a melon baller in my Amazon cart this week. Did you really? What a coincidence. What a coincidence. Now you get to uh, use it. You have another application for it. What did you originally buy? Well, for balling melon? I mean, <laughs> did you just want to, you want to get some actual like cantaloupe balls and whatnot? I mean, that's legitimate. I just, I don't know why I'm asking if it's so on the nose, you know? The nose, nose. All right, back to taking our seed pods out. Now that we got the bacon, removed Ooh, you can also make palm parisienne if you not made that palm parisienne is just potatoes that are done in the same style that i'm doing the pears in right now like taking and making more perfect circles like you can get a better circle out of here than this but i just want the seeds right now but making little perfect spe spheres of potato and uh cooking them slowly in butter. It's it's quite a delicious way to enjoy potatoes if you haven't tried it yet. You should look up a recipe for palm parisienne. All right, am I good? Nope, there's one and then that. Okay, I have just one pair left, everybody. And I'd already started that one from earlier. Okay, now we need to go back and cut this out. So we have this little bit of, um, like this line of fibrous, it's a fibrous part of our pear right here. So we just need to take and get it cut out. Here, I'm gonna try and hold this without shaking. So this line right up through the center of our pear, we're gonna remove it. It also has the stem at the very tip of it. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna make a V-shaped cut take out that center part right there. This is all for 
you know, enjoyment by the guests here later on. You don't want to have to be picking out pieces of seeds and stem and, and little fibrous parts of the interior of the pear later. So we're just going to do all the work for our guests right up front. We're both very busy. Kate is honestly killing it here right now, and I'm just finishing up summer school. We're taking a trip to Houston soon. Kate is looking forward to visiting the beach. Has she has she not been down to the beach down in Houston yet? That's awesome, Bart. I'm so glad you're both doing well. It's good to hear that Kate's killing it, man. Um, I Like I said, I've not been able to hop in on anybody's stream. It's not just you guys. It's, I've disappeared from Twitch for a couple of months now. Mellow greetings. Powdered, powdered, to powdered toastman. I got it. See? My lead's not great, but I, I did get that. Better, welcome to the stream. It's great to have you. My name's Logan, and I'm a chef out here in Denver, Colorado. We're making pears three different ways today. So grab yourself a snack and a drink and relax and enjoy the, enjoy the stream. I do like the mellow greetings. That's exactly the vibe we're going for around here. I do housekeeping and personal assistant work. One of the random but fun things I have to do for one of my clients is ball a whole watermelon about once a week. I was thinking of getting my own for that and miscellaneous things at home. It does come in handy. Like we just talked about three different ways in which you can use a melon baller from balling melons to, to doing it with potatoes or even removing the seed pods from fruits like uh, pears and apples. It is handy. I do fi find myself using my melon baller more often than you would think at first. Eric, welcome to the stream. It's good to see you. Happy Wednesday, my friend. Our menu today is a triple pear menu. A roasted bosque pear salad with mahi fish tacos and an Asian pear slaw. And right now what we're doing down here on the board is a red wine braised pear that I'm just cleaning our Donju pears for that. Donju is a French variety of pear, if you had figured that out from the name. Mm-hmm. Shut up and take my money. Uh, Eric, it's it's actually free for you to enjoy. So please do. But for those of you who are regulars on the stream and help support us monetarily, thank you very much. And if you'd like to yourself, you can go to ko-fi.com slash ingrediology or hit exclamation point support in chat and that'll show you the way to get there. Huh. This one's a little busted. That's the one I had to cut the brown parts out of earlier. He ain't, he ain't doing so hot. You can see through his head, okay? But he's still going to taste delicious. Hey, Kesara. Thank you so much for the, for the sub, for the support, for helping me buy groceries and equipment and website hosting fees. I really appreciate you. Thank you. We got our pears, pears up there, just floating around. That's actually quite mesmerizing. What's up, Blob? Blob, grab your hands for pear. Blob, if you want, you are more than welcome to chow down on some of our little melon balled seed pieces. You can take all of those, my friend. Oh, you guys know the fastest way to empty a wine bottle? Well, I'm gonna show you after I murder my cat. <laughs> All right, two minute tidy, get some of these dishes out of the way for us. What we got left to do, what we got left to do? We got, we got to clean our mahi, we got to do tortillas. So poach pears, clean fish, Tortillas, grill fish, and plate. So we're on the back side here, guys, probably, I don't know, maybe 35 to 45 minutes left, which is right on schedule. You know, it's 4.20 right now, Hey, But I'm aiming to be done here around 5, 5.15, so we're looking good. You're welcome, Blob. By drinking it, what? What are we talking about? 
by drinking what? I'm trying to remember what I say. See, this is the, I can keep up with chat and I can move from topic to topic, but my ADD brain doesn't remember what I said. It's, it's, I clear my RAM very quickly. Drinking it by drinking it. Oh, draining the red wine. I got you. I'm with you. I did, I'd like retrace my steps through what I was talking about a second ago. There we go. Yep, yep, we're on the same page. What kind of earbuds are those? They look like gizmos that Cybermen use to infect humans in Doctor Who. That's a deep cut right there, but you're right, they do. They're Bose, they're Bose headphones, and uh, they. I, this is how I hear all the all the alerts on stream and whatnot. You know, I look like I'm wearing, you know, something weird, something weird. I used to have like over the ear headphones that I would wear and cook at the same time. I'm like, I need to get some buds, I need to do something. So these are really nice, you should check them out. They're the Bose QC. 11s or something like that. I don't know. I don't know the exact number on them. We got our Beaujolais. Our Village de Beaujolais. Ooh. We're going to open this up, okay? We've got a medium sauce pot. Out, ready to go. There's a wine key, everybody. If you've not used a wine key before, you should get yourself one. Don't use those little things that you screw down at the top here. Let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. Don't use this. This is a beer opener, okay? That's all this is good for, because it's got the, the bottle cap opener here on the top. But this, if you just like punch it down into your wine and then pull that all back up, all that foil gets into your wine, or can get into your wine, it's very likely that it gets into your wine, which is why a wine key is handy because this little knife that extends like a little pocket knife right here boom just sits there at the top of the key you undo that and then underneath the lip of the bottle so not here not here underneath the knit lip of the bottle at the neck that's where you do this those probably sound amazing they i really like them powder they're great earbuds i love using wine and cooking sometimes i even put it in the food i think i've seen a uh, kitchen towel with that on it now, after you've gone underneath the neck and you've done your wine, take your key and then just run the knife up the side to loosen up the top. <laughs> this is not going according to plan, everybody. There we go. Pops off. And now, when we uncork our bottle, there's no foil around the top of the bottle to uh, get into our glasses of wine or whatever we might be cooking it. I do like Beaujolais. I'm a fan of Beaujolais. Now, no, you don't need to just pull this out of here now. You just put this, put those teeth right over the edge of the lip and then lever it up, all right? And then after you get to the top of that, you move it up a little bit more. Whoop. Well, yeah, maybe we need to lever a little bit more. There, now, comes up. And on that second tier, you pop it out. All right, there we go. That's how you open a bottle of wine for those of you who are curious. Now let's talk about emptying it. We're gonna just spin it in a nice little circle here. You see this? World record wine draining. There you go, you just make a little vortex right there. Give it a spin. We're gonna do like one and a half bottles of wine. I'm just eyeballing it, okay? As long as it's not Beaujolais Nouveau, I'll probably like it. Snake Eye, do you know the difference between Beaujolais Nouveau? I got my hand over here. Let's, let's try it from this direction. So again, knife under the neck. Give it a spin. Now, when you first put your corkscrew in, we got the bottle right here. Put the tip of it right in the center of the bottle, and then begin turning at an angle. This is hard to do already at an angle. And as you go in, the cork will straighten itself out. And that's how you properly insert a wine cork. The fancy wine key with a two-tier setup. Is it? Most of I've had are like that. <laughs> Logan the Wogan, hello from your burner account. 
What is up, Logan? It's good to see you, my friend. What's new with you? How's your summer going? My doppelganger online here. Whoop. Nouveau is only good if it's fresh in France. Otherwise, it's low tier nasty. I said I was only doing half that bottle of wine. So I started to do the Vortex thing and I had to stop halfway through. All right, so we've got our wine spilling all over the place. Get that all cleaned up. I gotta go pick up my dinner. Be back in a little while. I heard that, Snake Eye. Be safe, my friend. Now, as I said before, everybody, we're gonna be taking our red wine and adding in a cup of sugar. One full cup. You want it real sweet. And the reason why we're using so much sugar in this, on top of this already being a sweet red wine, is because we're gonna reduce this. We're gonna cook our pears in this mixture, but then after the pears are cooked, we'll remove them from the red wine and then continue to boil it. So that at the end, it has this syrupy, thick consistency. What do we got in here? I mean, we probably got like three to four cups of red wine here in our sauce pot. This is gonna turn into a cup, maybe three fourths of a cup of total red wine syrup, possibly less than that, all right? So we're gonna reduce it until it just has a nice, thick, gloss, glaze consistency. Alcohol abuse. If you spill it, you have to take a sip for good luck or something like that, heard that, cheers. Mm, that's really good. That's a very drinkable wine. Kathy, I think you will approve. Okay. So onto the stove. We'll go our sauce pot. Uh, and then we're gonna put that on a high heat, just get up to temperature to melt our sugar, and then we'll lower the heat to maintain a simmer. And now, it's time to clean our mahi-mahi. Mmm. Pears can go off to the side for the time being. And then I've got fish over here. And everybody, just a quick reminder, if you're joining us over here for the first time and you haven't followed me on my YouTube channel, on the YouTube side of things, I'm Ingrediology across all platforms. You can just hit exclamation point YouTube in chat right there and that'll spit out the link for my channel. But I basically take all these videos and I edit them down into much more digestible, smaller videos. We just put up our shrimp fra di diavolo uh, that was three minutes long. So instead of three hours, it was three minutes. So we're, if you like this in a much more consumable fashion, then go check it out over there. Appreciate you. Is that wine or blood? Yep. <laughs> Jeez. Thank you to everybody who voted in that poll over on Twitch. Would this be considered a kind of poached pear? Exactly, Case Rod. This is a poached pear. This is exactly what they're talking about when they say poached pears. Now, you can do these really beautiful poached pears if you have like uh, some Donju pears like we just cleaned that have a really long stem on them. You can take and you can like hang it in the pot of simmering wine. Uh, there, there's, a, there's actually two different ways of doing this. Sometimes people poach the pears in simple syrup. So just a uh, very basic mixture of a one to one ratio of water and sugar. That's simple syrup. And so they poach them in that first and then just make the red wine reduction. And so instead of putting the pears in here, they just reduce this all down and make the syrup by itself, all right, without having the pears inside of the production beforehand. Now, I'm preferring to cook the pears 
in the red wine and then make a reduction out of that. It's less steps, it's less mess. I don't think it results in any any worse of a product. In fact, I think it's be better because then the red wine is suffused throughout all of the flesh of the pear as you're eating it instead of just being on a thin layer on the glaze on the outside. This is the way I prefer it. You guys pick the way that you want to do with your recipes at home. I'm not here to yuck anybody's yum. Digestible, get it? Cause it's food! Damn straight pattern. See, you're picking up what I'm laying down. Ah, uh, all right. We gotta switch out cutting boards here real quick. We're gonna take our big wooden booze block out of the way. Whoa, I just oiled it today so it's super slippery. And then I'm pulling out a plastic cutting board because we're gonna be cutting some fish, some fishy fishes. Man, this needs a little wipe. Guys, we have made quite a lot here today on stream. If you've been with us the whole time, we did our roasted pears, which we need to check on as a matter of fact. Almost there. And then we're, we're gonna make a simple vinaigrette and our salad. But we've also made chimichurri sauce. We made Asian pear slaw. We just finished off poaching our pears. This menu today is pears three ways. Okay. Bing, bang, boom, bing, bong, bing, bingly, bongly, bingly, bongly, boo. If anybody has seen Peppa Pig, that's from Peppa Pig. And it's stuck in my head 24 seven. Okay. What knife do I want to use? Let's use this knife. Let's use the Hinkle, all right? So we have here laid out some Mahi Mahi fillets. These were previously frozen, but you can get them fresh, frozen, however you like to do it. Just make sure that if you buy these previously frozen, you do not thaw them in the package. You take them out of the package and allow them to slack thaw overnight, all right? Because these are packaged under low oxygen conditions, an anaerobic environment, and the bacteria that comes out of an anaerobic environment, pretty nasty shit, so don't mess with it. Thaw it in the fridge, out of the bag. Now, back down here on the board, the board, we have these fillets laid out. Now, I'm not just gonna cook up this fish and then chunk it into our tacos. No, no, no. We're gonna be doing a double bias cut. Now, a bias cut, if you guys aren't familiar, cutting something on a bias means uh, cutting it at an angle, all right? But we're doing a double bias. So, that's one angle, and then that's the second angle. So we're gonna turn it first on its like X axis and then turn it on the Y axis, okay? So it gets two 45 degree turns. And this is gonna make it so that we get nice flat pieces of fish. You see how we're turning this into about a quarter of an inch wide and very long. That's thanks to our double bias cut right here. Cooking it in the wine looks nicer visually as well. Less steps are always better too. Exactly. Exactly, Kesara Sarah. All right, so we get these nice, bigger, flatter, more surface area chunks of fish that will fit nicely into our tacos. Those are gonna go back over onto the plate. Simply dressed with some oil, salt, pepper. And grilled up. I'm hearing thunder outside. That ain't good. That's what we're looking for. I keep hitting the remote against the cabinet in my pocket so the camera starts moving. Which that wasn't bad timing, all things considered.
is all nicely cut up. Looking good. I'm gonna find a piece of the foil over here. So, our grill is preset. We need to get some salt and a little bit of oil on this fish right here. Then we're gonna go outside and have a good time with the grill. All right, um, no we're not. You kidding me? So I guess it's raining everybody. I need to go unplug that grill. <sighs> Our wine is boiling, bubbling away nicely though, so that's good news. I mean, what do I do? Do I wait? I think I should wait for the rain to pass and then try it on the grill. I guess we gotta do our tortillas first. So let's let's get our tortillas on and going and then we can, I guess, see if it stopped raining at that point. First, I'm gonna give my hands a little wash. I've got some corn tortillas, everybody, and if you see over here on the stove, I've also got uh, two cast iron skillets, and I'm gonna pull out another nonstick skillet on top of that. But first, we gotta get our pears down. So in go our pear halves, which have been melon balled, stems and everything trimmed out. And these will go into our wine. Now we got our tortillas coming out. Whew. Turn the heat on underneath our skillets. Get ourselves another non-stick to go up here at the top. And what I like to do, everybody, is get the um, tortillas pre-greased. So I'm gonna get a sheet tray, a little bit of parchment paper, and then a bottle of spray oil, Pam, canola, whatever you got at home. And we're gonna spray each side of our tortillas instead of oiling them individually or having to oil the pan individually. I do use a lot of sheet trays in the kitchen on Wednesdays. If you're just joining us here on Ingrediology, welcome, happy Wednesday to you. My name's Logan and we are featuring pears three different ways today. Roasted pears for our salad, mahi tacos with mahi mahi fish tacos with an Asian pear slaw and then our roasted, I'm sorry, poached pears. I don't even know what I'm doing. There's our poached pears, they're on, ready to go. And then we need to get our roasted pears out. Oh, baby. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Oh. 
Whew. All right, roasted pears are out. Looking good, I'm very happy with that. Those are Bosque pears, by the way, in case any of you are wondering. Hey, hey, Grandpa. Golden and delicious. More like boss pears right now. The dad jokes are dropping hot in here, folks. Look out. Look out. Am I right? Am I right? All right. So, give one side of your tortilla a spray with the oil, and then just restack your stack. Got to shuffle the stack together. Okay. And then press it. And then both sides are oiled now. Ta da! All right, over to the stove we go. Mm, we're not quite there on any of that. But it's going to be. I'm going to be good. It's going to be a little bit of a tortilla party up in here. I think I'm just going to pour myself. A glass of wine while we wait for our pans to heat up. We got a minute or two. What are you guys making for dinner tonight? What do we got on the menu, everybody? Where'd my red wine go? Lovely jubbly. Cheers to you all. Man, the time that it, like, it never rains in Colorado during the summer. We've had a very wet summer out here this year. It's getting nasty. Like it's raining and blowing even harder. I think I, I'm just gonna have to I'll probably do these in the pan. We might just be staying inside today, folks. Back here on the stove, everybody. Let's take a look at our pears. You're going to get for yourself a slotted or, this isn't exactly slotted, but a spoon with holes in it so that we can even easily lift these pears out later on. I'm just gonna stir this around a little bit, make sure that all of our sugar is dissolved here in the bottom. Now, one thing I would suggest uh, if you're making this recipe in the winter time or fall, what would be really nice? Cinnamon stick, maybe a couple of star anise, a clove or two thrown in there. I'm gonna make a spiced wine poached pear. Yeah. Ah. All right, I think our pans are probably heated up with the tortillas. The nice menu is grilled chicken sandwiches on a brioche roll with an Asian broccoli slaw. Cheers to that. That sounds delicious, Kesara. I do love brioche. I've not made brioche, I think, since like culinary school. 
brioche in the dough it features egg yolks which differentiates it from a lot of breads but uh, that's why it has that nice yellow color to it brioche is delicious okay uh let's see tortilla time like i said i keep talking about it i'm not doing it This is just a... Uh... Oh, of course I didn't turn that one on. Why would I? This is all about rotating, multitasking right here. It's so soft and the slight sweetness complements many things well, especially chicken salad. Like just how grapes and cranberries go in chicken salad so well, on a brioche roll, that is also the case. Now, you see how we're starting to develop just little bubbles here on the top of your tortillas? That's the indicator that they need a flip. Honestly, could go a little further. A little bit of color is good. But you, uh, I'm using cast iron pans here this afternoon, everybody, and cast iron is very good at maintaining, holding on to its heat. So if I were to just blast these at high and then start trying to do my tortillas, you're gonna burn the tortilla before you actually finish cooking in the interior, getting it warmed through. So you wanna get this on a medium heat, and that means we have to approach medium slowly. We can't just run up to it, okay? Because you'll usually overshoot. It's like watching paint dry, isn't it? Sorry. Tortilla time. We're keeping it chill here on the stream this afternoon. By the way, if you're joining us on YouTube or Facebook, I'm glad you're here. Make sure you're hitting that follow or subscribe button over there. Same with Twitch. If you're a new uh, joiner here on the stream, love to keep you around or have you see our notifications for next time we go live. We do our streams on Wednesdays. Now, our previous schedule was weekly, but here over the summer, I've, I've been doing bi-weekly basically uh, just due to trips and, and having a more relaxed pace here around the home during the summertime. But we'll get back into it in the fall. Hey, Erica, how are you? Can we get a shout out for the girl who bakes, a fellow Twitch food and drink streamer here on the, on the platform? How are you, Erica? I hope, I hope that you're doing well, your summer's going smoothly. Uh, we're getting rained out right now, so we're, we're unable to grill. Oh shoot, I'm gonna burn my I'm gonna burn my tortillas. How's the tiny one, Eric? He is doing fantastic. He is an inch away from walking and two inches away from talking. He's amazing, me and his mom, every single day. It's super fun. I love being a dad. I really do love being a dad, you know? It's, it's just great to be able to spend as much time with him as I possibly can. Huh. We're doing pears three ways today. We're roasting, we're, we're, well, we're serving them in a slaw with fish tacos and we're poaching them. Been having some swim lessons with the kiddo, so that's been fun. That was like real early morning. We have a pool over here down by us that uh, I see a bunch of kids around in there. Oh, hey, Kimbara TV, welcome to the stream. Great to have you, happy Wednesday to you. Thanks for the follow. Are you a uh, Twitch streamer yourself, my friend? If so, can we get a shout out for Kimbara TV? We're very supportive over here in Food and Drink. Ah, uh, yes, the calm before the storm, where they walk. Oh man, everyone's been telling me that. He's, he's getting so mobile, it's hard to control him. Like if he doesn't want to be on your lap, he's just going to keep squirming and squirming and squirming until you're finally like, fine, go in your walker. And then he just zooms around. He loves his little walker. He's got those little, little four-wheeled contraptions that he's able to push around and he goes running man like he runs into things on purpose it's so funny because he you know he's running into it on purpose because he'll run across the room and then before he hits whatever he'll pick up his legs and for like last two or three feet he'll just like coast into it with his eyes wide and then hit it and laugh 
I remember when we had to hide all the things in his reach. Finally, sad day. I know. We're we're not we're not quite there. It's slowly been moving upwards because, like I say, the walker. We covered all the outlets, and there's no cores and stuff sticking out. I make sure he's not able to like get under my desk and stuff. That that's our basic level of child proofing right now. Huh. Guys, you can't let me burn these tortillas. I'm notorious for burning these tortillas. And yes, I'm blaming you if I burn them. You can't let me, because you have full control. I thank you, Erica. I know. Like everyone's like, your your child is the cutest child that has or ever existed. But in my case, it's true. <laughs> uh, but no, he's he's being adorable. He's just all smiles. Smiles and laughs and hangs out with Grammy and Grandpa. It's been really great. It's awesome. But um, how's the channel going for you? What are you cooking lately? How's the job? What have you been up to? We actually just started taking off baby lock so he can do some things on his own. Crazy how time flies. Yeah, I know. We, we just put the baby locks on the door. So as yours came off, ours went on because we, you know. We gotta let, make sure he can't fall down the basement stairs, make sure he can't get out into the garage. And they have these locks now, where it's actually, it's quite genius. I'm gonna show you guys real quick. Uh, let's go back to six. So over here, we put in the first baby lock. So this way, he can't, this thing, like you squeeze both sides and pop it up into place and it locks. So that way he can't move the door handle at all. But then, look at these sneaky fucks. They took and they put a button. It's a fake button. It doesn't do anything. And so the toddler pushes it. Is that not the funniest thing you've ever seen? Because he'll be pushing that for hours and I have no idea that you gotta like squeeze both sides and lower it down in order to get it to work. Pretty funny. Just out here tricking babies, huh? That's what we're doing? That's what we're doing now, guys? We're just tricking babies? Sorry, I like that swoop in shot, so I did it again. Ha! <sighs> Fake buttons are the best. So you, you're familiar with this technique then, Erica. I haven't streamed since last year. Might come back to it once the kiddo starts preschool. Dude, you, uh, Erica, I feel like we could really have like like a three hour conversation about this for real like you know because the choice becomes the your your kind of passion slash hobby uh or your kid and your kid always takes precedence and i i'm struggling right now personally with like the just the guilt over, over people the audience i built up over the last two years and then all of a sudden i'm just like incommunicado and not on the discord anymore and always you know out doing something with Remy. But the, the truth of the matter is, I choose to. I would 100% uh, rather be spending my time and in investing into him. Nothing against you guys, absolutely nothing against it. But it, it just becomes a lot more of a chore to get this set up. Like right now today, Kathy's having to watch Remy for six hours um, today because I start setting up and getting ready for this at 11 o'clock. I go live at three. And then we stream for three hours typically after that. So it's like a seven hour time that I have to be focused in here on the kitchen. That's a huge chunk. I'm so thankful for both Kevin and Kathy and Megan and you know the, the opportunity they give me to even continue to do this. Because if we didn't have them living with us, boom, kaput. This wouldn't exist. This would not be happening right now, guys. I would be just in full-time dad mode all the time. Oh, I'm here if you want to vent. I feel so bad. People keep asking me when I'm going to come back to streaming. I'm like, I don't know. I'm at preschool is free. I him at preschool is free time for me. Exactly. Choosing to stream is losing the only free time I will have. That's the other thing, right? It's like if I do have free time, which is in the evenings after he's gone to bed. Shit. Which is in the evenings after he's gone to bed and dinner is done and everything's cleaned up, then I I'm like. I really, I'd really like to veg out in front of some video games, please. Which is I, a lot of times what I do, because I just need to let my brain leak out of my ears. Yeah. Anyways, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I respect you. 
even more after having been through this experience, Erica. It's tough. Man, it's rough. Guys, we're just gonna keep our tortilla pans hot. We're gonna keep these tortilla pans hot and get our fish right in those, because it is continuing to rain out here in Denver. Oh, I remember the 10 p.m. streams because that's when he went to bed. Yeah, like, ugh, no thank you. And yeah, I don't want to do the late night stuff. I've never been a fan of wanting to do the late night stuff. And guys, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be negative or anything about this. I, I saw a couple of people pop out and everything. Please tell me if I'm just bitching and moaning too much. But, you know, it's, it's a difficult decision. I definitely don't want to stream late at night. I'm set up for a vasectomy. Good call, Steak Guy. Good call. Hey, if, if you know, if you know already, you know, that that's just not the path for you, then more power to you in the responsible way of going about it. Because nothing's worse than when, uh, you, you know, somebody has a kid and they didn't want it in the first place. That's unfair to the kid. That's unfair to the parent. And, you know, if you're like, hey, we're just going to cut this off of the past, nip it in the bud, so to speak, then good for you. Uh, now he is holding one of my hands, so I can't type. Always. Always. They're always there. Always watching. Always interfering. <laughs> Back down here on the stove, we got to flip these tortillas, peeps. If you're just joining us here on Ingrediology and you lasted through that bitch session about being a parent, then um, more power to you. Thanks for being here. Hit that subscribe or follow or whatever button. Hang out with us. We're making pairs three ways today, my friends. Pairs three ways. At the end of the day, don't feel bad for putting family first. Family first always. I hope most people understand that and appreciate any time you do stream. Nip it in the balls. God damn it, Snake Eye. <laughs> you ain't wrong. <laughs> Nip it in the balls. Oh, Alex, you always have one thing that just makes me, that really tickles me here on stream, and I appreciate you for it. Now, and you know where it's the toughest, Erica, and I, I think I'm going to try and make this the last, the last point I put on this, but the, the toughest thing is when you have subscribers, is when you have supporters, when you have people who are saying, hey, here is some of my hard-earned money because I really appreciate and believe in what you're doing. And, um, and that's where I'm, I, I feel the worst about disappointing people. Like, I, I could give a shit about the people who come in here with the, the classes and, and do the stuff for free and interact. Like, I'm, I'm fine with the interaction and everything, but I don't feel guilty about not streaming for them. Because it's like, they're going to go to another stream anyways. It's, it, whatever. But the people who, who actually, you know put forward and support you. That's who I'm like, oh God, I'm so sorry. I just, I can't, I can't do it right now. And that's, did that. Yes, I thought about streaming without affiliate just so I don't have to worry about that. Yeah, just for, I'm kind of letting it die. I'm kind of just letting it slowly die. Um, I mean, people can still support us on Kofi, but when it comes to the Twitch, the Twitch platform, they already take half of our money in the first place. I, and I'm all, and like, I feel like I'm disappointing people. So whatever. You're getting the, guys are getting the inside shop talk right here today. And honestly, Erica, that's why I've been like doing so much stuff on, on YouTube because it's just a more permanent medium. Yeah, it's it's a huge learning curve for me right now to figure out the editing and then you know SEO stuff and all the stuff that goes into making a good and or popular YouTube channel. But that content's evergreen. If someone looks up Shrimp Fra Diablo and they click on my video they've clicked on my video. They don't have to sit through uh, a live stream to get it, which it's a much more Pardon me, it's a much more consumable form of, of media. Hey, 
And when I tell people, like, oh, this is what I do. Here's my channel. It's not... It's not... Um, it's not like a live stream, which can kind of be awkward. Like when you're telling people about what you do for your hobby or your channel or your side gig or whatever. And then it's like, oh, here's a three hour video of me talking about having kids or cooking awkwardly or drinking a beer. It's better to have something nice and polished. Um, and I, I'm really, I'm finding a lot of joy in that in YouTube. What are we posting the pears in? Good question, Erica. We are gonna be, we have the pears down in red wine, a red wine and sugar concentrate concentrate just a red wine sugar solution that's what we got going on let me give you a shot of that right there boom these are Danjou pears so we've used three different types of pears we use Danjou here in our poaching we use Asian pears in the slaw for our fish tacos and then uh, those Bosque pears are what we have sitting over here which have been roasted and are gonna go in the salad with arugula bacon and a light lemon vinaigrette that's what we're doing I tested this this menu out on my neighbors the other day they came over fr on Fridays we have a uh, uh, not on Fridays on like about once a month we get together with our next door neighbors and I, I make dinner for all of us and we drink and we smoke and we have a really fun time <sighs> let's get a little bit of oil on our fish over here folks and then um, we're gonna start finishing up not really we're, we're actually not that close to the end sorry to disappoint anybody I'm gonna take some uh, salt, and we're gonna do salt and oil. So first, here comes the salt on top of our mahi-mahi. Steak guy thinks it's blood. He, he's convinced that it's blood. I'm using the spray oil, everybody, because I'm. there might be some of you sitting back there like, oh, why is this chef using this Pam spray oil on everything? It really, it's about coverage, right? It's about the fish. Yeah, you can turn it off. I'm sorry, I just, it's still raining and it was getting heavier a minute ago. Thanks, Kev, I appreciate you. Thanks, Grandpa. That sounds like a really fun time. I wish I had cool neighbors. Anyways, the, the spraying is really about coverage. I was able to get the oil much more evenly distributed across the fish and my tortillas because I was using the spray oil. That's really why I'm using it. It's not because this oil is any better or worse for this application. It's just easier to get this coated in some oil and quickly cooked up. But yeah, our neighbors are pretty cool. In case you're right, you know what's funny is my next door neighbor, his name is Logan. So it's the Logan, Logan squared over here. But yeah, they're, they're really, really nice people. Really fun. Guy owes his own, his own business and very successful. And um, he really appreciates food. He asked me if I could teach him how to cook. And, I, and like, how much could he pay me? And I was like, I, dude, you don't have to pay me. You don't, you don't have to pay me anything. We're, we're neighbors. And no, I'm not going to like lay out a full cooking class for you and take you from 101 through, you know, everything that it takes to become a chef. Like... That's not what I do. I mean, I do it online if you want to watch that, but you can stay next door, but I'm not set up here to do it. Uh, but if you want to come over, I'm more than happy to make a meal with you once a month. So that's what we've been doing. He'll be like, hey, how do you make sushi? I'm like, we'll do sushi next month, man. And so he kind of came over and we did like four different types of rolls and then they're from Hawaii. So they actually made Spam Masubi for me and I'd never had Spam Masubi before. And so they taught me how to make Masubi. It was cool, it was fun. All right, hot pans, hot mahi-mahi going down. This is gonna take no time at all, everybody. Trust. I can get probably like four pieces of fish there in the pan. And then we'll get some fish down here. How, hey, how do I become good looking like you? Simply, I'm sure you already are good looking. Are you stealing some wine, Kathy? Yeah. Please do, it's actually very drinkable, it's good stuff. Yeah. But how are you? <laughs> it's great to see you, Asian. Welcome back, happy Wednesday to you. Long time no see. Oh, I need to switch the cameras back. It's all the calves, yeah, exactly.
Everybody, if you're joining us here on Ingridiology for our Wednesday weeknight dinner, we are making pears three different ways today. Currently, you're watching me fry up a little bit of mahi-mahi that we cut up earlier in the stream. This is for our fish tacos, which are going to go with an Asian pear slaw and then some chimichurri topping it off. But we're also poaching pears, as you can see down there in the medium, medium pot that we got. Those are going to be served over ice cream, a la mode, if you will. I won't. And then we've already roasted our pears for our, our Bosque pear salad with arugula and a light lemon vinaigrette. I'm feeling that wine and uh, whatever else. Doing great, my friend. Life been good. Big news. Hey, what's the big news? Share with us the news, Asian. Come on. I hope everything's uh, going well. Well, you said everything's good and you got big news, so lay the big good news on us. <sighs> Guys, if you're watching me right now and you've not followed the YouTube channel, please please go follow the YouTube channel, exclamation point YouTube. I'm working so hard. I'm spending hours a day editing video, going over video, watching tutorial shit, trying to make it as good as possible. I just need you, I need you. Sorry for the, oh my God, I didn't even. You're standing there, you're watching me fuck with the camera. I didn't record a single piece of it. I'm sorry, the red wine's hitting me right now. Expecting my first child cometh, cometh January. Congratulations, Asian. It is, it's a wonderful terrorizing ride. I'm sure you'll, you'll enjoy it. I was just talking with uh, the girl who bakes, who you guys need to be following. Again, shout out to Erica. Awesome Twitch food and drink streamer who you need to check out, but also has a kiddo. Kiddo much older than mine. My, my boy's only nine months old right now. But it's a trip, dude. It's a trip. Or, I don't know if you're a dude. I don't think you're a dude, actually, come to think of it. I'm not trying to gender anybody here, okay? Dude is a genderless term. C films? What's up, C? What am I doing? What? Welcome back to the stream, my friend. Good to see you. Happy Wednesday. What's new? We're doing some fish tacos right now.
I'm the famous Sea Phelps. <laughs> I'm dude. Okay, all right, Agent. Hurt. Got you. The dude abides. Ah. The dude abides. It certainly does. Hey, boy, join us over on YouTube or Facebook. My apologies here today, guys, because normally we have all these classes set up to go with a recipe guide laid out for you already up on the website over at ingredientology.org. We have that for every single one of our other classes, and if you'd like to go check that out, you get an exclamation point website in the chat. It'll take you there. It's Twitch's knowledge and enthusiast movies and TV. In addition, I do web dev and database. <laughs> Heard that, Seafels. I literally forget what I was talking about. Did someone add extra alcohol to my wine? What the fuck is happening? What are you having for dinner, C? I know we got chicken sandwiches going on in chat tonight. Okay, Sarah's having that for dinner. Holy moly, what do we got? Eat it, dads! Eat it, dads. Thank you so much for coming in on this Wednesday weeknight dinner over on Ingredientology. Raiders, welcome. If you've not been here on stream before, my name is Logan. I'm a chef out of Denver, Colorado. Today, we are doing a study in pears. So we're doing pears three different ways. Roasted over a sp uh, arugula salad. We're doing them as Asian pears in a slaw for our mahi tacos, which we're cooking over on the stove. And then I also have some pears poaching in red wine and a syrup. Syrup. Dad, what are you up to? How you doing, my friend? Thank you so much for raiding in. I really appreciate it. What'd you guys cook tonight? I'm assuming you guys are a food stream if you're raiding into ingredientology and your title is eat and your stream handle is eat at dads. Hey, thank you for following. Just a chance. I appreciate you. Hey, Kip. Kip, how you doing? It's good to see you. Can we get a shout out for Kip the dish pig? And oh my God, Kip. I mean, what's it been? It's literally been a year since we've talked to each other. For real, though, right? Like, what? Please remind me. Um, something kitchen. Your your wife or partner's stream that you do. Damn it, I can't remember. Put it in the chat. Give it a shout out. Make sure to follow these other uh, food and food and drink Twitch streamers over on their channels. I'm sorry, man. That's really rude of me. I, it's an honest mistake. Kimbara. No, you fucking didn't. I made a salad with a few pears in it tonight. Good luck. Dad, that's so funny. We're do we are, like I said, we're do we're doing a study in pears. That's why you guys had to come over here. I appreciate you sharing the love. I tell you what. Cat's kitchen, thank you. God, I just uh, just blanked out on it for sure. Can we also get a shout out for Cat's Kitchen, please? A fellow food and drinkers. They're from down under. So, in Australia time, I'm never, I'm like rarely awake when you guys are streaming. It's just a different part of my day and everything. But guys, you should go check out their channel, at Cat's, Chick, Cat's Kitchen. Give them a follow. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for being here, Kip. Thank you. Oh, we gotta make sure our fish doesn't burn here real quick.
This is great cinematography, isn't it? If you have a brother or sister born on the same month, day, and year as you, then you are a twin pair. If you have one brother or sister born in the same month, day, and year... Oh, that was just a double thing. That's true. I, I definitely understand what twins are. What's the larger point? There we go, guys. I just love it when it slip and slides everywhere. There we go, everybody. Mayor Wurtz, I would like at least two of those, please. Mayor Wurtz. Oh, Kyle, I love you, buddy. It's so good to see you, my friend. Hold on, let me turn off the stove right here, and then I'll talk to your ass. Do, do, do. Bum, bum, bum. And look at you. Look at you joining over here on YouTube. Hungry Wolf, thank you so much for the host as well. Hungry Wolf, it's great to have you here, my friend. Hosting the stream and everything. We need to plate up our salads, we need to plate up our tacos, and then we need to get our poached pears on a plate a la mode for you guys, okay? So let's get some of this set out. There we go. Whew. And that can close up. I got my wine. We need some plates out though, okay? What plates? I'm thinking the large white ones. Going to sit and eat and lurk a bit. Happy to catch you on. Well met. Thank you, sir. Guys, make sure you're following. Eat at Dad's as well, please. All right, go go support fellow Twitch streamers here on the channel, as well as Mayor Wurtz. Can we get a shout out for Mayor Wurtz, a fellow Twitch streamer you guys need to be following? He has a funny, funny kitchen show that he does, as well as being just a gaming streamer as well. So, I miss you, Kyle. We had to drop you out of the Halo chat because you never said anything. But I'd love to get on and play with you, buddy. We need to catch up. Let's get some time. Onto the plating. Do you prefer pears or pears more? I see what you did there. And I'm going to have to go with the latter. How goes Daddyology? Daddyology's going well, Hungry Wolf. Can we also get a shout out for Hungry Wolf? Uh, Hungry Wolf Kitchen, please. Another food and drink streamer here on Twitch who's, who's just incredible in their own right. And you need to be following all these lovely food and drinkers who support us here on the channel. You guys are awesome. Ooh. Here's what we gotta do. I gotta like wipe off the wheels of this thing. And then wipe down the countertop as well. Cause if there's any oil on the island, I miss you too, buddy. Let's chat this week. Amen. Amen, Kyle. Let's um how are you though? Like how's everything going for you? How how is the wifey? How's the house? You're working on the set and everything? Again, I've told every single Twitch streamer who's coming in here tonight, like, listen, I, I'm an asshole. I have, like, disappeared from the community altogether. I'm sorry. Fatherhood calls. Not stepfatherhood. Real fatherhood. I like pairs. What's better than one thing? A pair of things. It's true. Two's better than one. We've established that. I like my Korean pears. The, uh, I, these are the Asian pears. I, I don't know if they're Korean pears necessarily. You're like a magician just weaving in and out, baby. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Listen, stepdad is a real job. Someone has to give the kids beer. Who else? Who else are you going to get your first beer from? 
Hmm. I can't turn the fan off, of course, so we're just going to have to deal with it, guys. Sorry about that. DJ, welcome to the stream, my friend. Hello, hello. Happy Wednesday. To all of you just joining us, we're making pairs three ways here today on the channel. Make sure you're following over here on Twitch. If you're joining us on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. I'd love to see you, and I think you'd like to see more of our edited videos and our shorts that we're putting up here lately. Okay, so we need to first make up a salad. So let's get those square plates out. I, I miscalculated. One, two, three, four. We need to make a quick vinaigrette. So I've got arugula over here in the cooler, everybody. Now to this, we're gonna add in some olive oil, lemon juice, salt, pepper. We're keeping it real simple here today, everybody. Making sure that this is just really easily recreatable for you guys at home because this is a great way to highlight pears. If you're not eating enough pears in your diet, if you feel like you've uh, been left out, you need to try out these recipes. Nothing too complex, but a great way to really show off this fantastic ingredient. So you have barely been here this year. I, <laughs> God damn it. Yes, C Films. Shorts, exclamation point, calf cam. It's not a bad idea. Maybe do some calf cam. Highlights. Oh. Now, on top of this lemon juice, we're going to toss in some more olive oil. Like I said, simple lemon vinaigrette. Literally lemon juice, olive oil, salt, pepper. That's all you need. Now, on top of that, we've got these lovely Bosque pears. Check it out, everybody. Look at those. Eat your hot out. God-given God is Gucci. Good to see you. I'm glad your mouth is watering. Greens are for jabronis. Yeah, well, you're definitely a jabroni. So are you saying you like greens? We're just gonna toss this salad with some tongs. Hey, Tony! Welcome. Good to see you, my dear. We're doing great. We're doing great, thank you. I hope you're doing well. <laughs> you will be pairing, indeed. Indeed, I will be pairing. Honestly, guys, that's the way I like my arugula. Like, just lemon juice, olive oil, salt, pepper. That's really all you need. Speaking of which, I don't think I gave it any salt. Incomparable. Hi, sweet boy. Did I hear him uh, fussing a little bit? Did, did he just get up? Oh, okay. Hey, fuss bus. How are you? What's Dada doing well, over uh, here? Oh, I understand the battle stations. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Wait, Brad, you finally, you finally beat me out. You beat me out first. We were probably coming to you instead, but you, you actually made it out of the, uh, out of your cooking class before I did, which is surprising because I normally beat you. Welcome in everybody. If you haven't been here on the stream before, my name's Logan. This is Ingrediology, and today we're doing a study in pears. We're doing pears three different ways. We have Bosque pears that have been roasted for this salad that I'm just plating up right now. You caught us at the perfect time. We're using Asian pears and an Asian pear slaw that we're pairing with, pairing with, mahi mahi tacos. And then on top of that, we're going to be doing a poached pear with Danjou pears. We're making a reduced 
a reduced red wine reduction. Just a red wine reduction, a, sy a syrup that's going to be over the the poached pears a la mode. And if you don't know what a la mode means, that means with ice cream. How you doing, Waybread? Big shout out to my buddy Waybread here on Twitch with the food and drinkers over here. You're amazing, man. Thank you so much for the raid. I appreciate you coming out. You you caught me. We're, we're rarely on these days, so this is like my second stream in July. But you guys can catch me over on YouTube if you haven't before. So I, we're really focusing in our efforts on making edited down videos since that's just more conducive to my time constraints right now. Who do we got coming in? We got a small snack. <laughs> Wayson is here to talk to you about your car's extended warranty. Thank you. I appreciate you, but I'm good on the insurance. Laura, Laura, it's great to see you, my dear. How are you? How's, uh, how's Ben? How's Ben doing? DJ, it's great to see ya. Oh, I've already seen DJ. I'm sorry. DJ was in here earlier. We got Laura. We got Waybread popping in. I know, dude. I was hyped seeing you live, right? I usually, I get in there before you. I usually, I'm like in, out. I'm like two, two and a half hours. We're doing a little longer stream tonight. We're doing the, the pair thing like I told you about. Where, welcome to Paropia. Yes, it is perio, Paropia for the night. For sure. Down here on the cutting board, guys, we've got our arugula dressed simply with lemon juice, olive oil, salt, and pepper. Don't worry about the baby crying in the background. He does that. No, don't worry about it, baby. That wasn't the slight at you. I was just saying, like, trying to make a joke out of it. Because boy boy, boy boy is doing his moaning myrtle routine right now. We call it his moaning myrtle routine because that's what he does. He gets tired enough, he's walking around in his walker, he's just ah. He's not crying, he's not like really upset, he's just like, I'm bored. Just gotta vent it out, Bubba, okay? You gotta let it go. Well, that trip to Amsterdam, all good thanks. Ben just came back from TwitchCon in Europe. Ooh, so TwitchCon was in Amsterdam. That's awesome. How was TwitchCon Europe? Negan came in here earlier asking if I was going to be making an appearance at TwitchCon out in San Diego this year. Uh, unfortunately, for those of you, if you were getting your hopes up for that, no, I will not be. Sorry. My apologies, but we're not doing that this year. So we've got our four things of arugula right here. Oh, I didn't cut up the bacon, everybody. The hell are you thinking, chef? Sorry, let me give this, let me give the bacon an old one two, all right? A little one two, one two. We cooked off these bacon strips earlier. So our, our salad this evening, everybody, consists of these roasted Bosque pears that you can see over on the sheet tray, as well as our bacon blue cheese over arugula. Real simple, but real delicious. The pics looked like it was good fun. He hung out with Claire. Oh man, how fun is that? Ben and Claire and all the other lovely European food and drink streamers that we know. That'd be so much fun. I'd have a real kick out of that. Cause you know, you know Happy Chef was there as well. Sten was hanging out. Mm. Mm. Roasted pears, ladies and gentlemen. Kip, thank you. I'd smash you. What? What does that even mean? Player met Sven, that's fun. How oh, awesome, I love it. Seeing all our little community getting together, growing. Height is attractive in women and food. All right, everybody. With a salad, you want to really build on top of these greens, but I'm not putting this, smashing it down in the middle. How is pear doing? I think all the pears are doing good. Sarah, Sarah Green, 
it is so great to have you here over on YouTube, my dear. We got, we got like 50 people hanging out over here on Twitch. YouTube is a ghost town right now. So thank you for being here. Uh, and if you have any questions, feel free to chat in the box with us. We're, I can see them just as well as I can see my Twitch chatters. But I'm glad you're here. All right. Back down here on the board. What's in my fridge? Welcome to the kitchen. It's great to see you. Hello, hello, hello. We want those fluffy salads, chat. Amen. Now we got some blue cheese, which we're gonna break up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's get that crumbled here. Ooh. Cheesy, bluey, moldy. Truly kind of gross. Oh. How about them apples? Sandoval, hey, welcome back to the stream, my friend. Long time no see. What about Facebook? Sorry, sorry, Facebook. Fuck you, Mark Zuckerberg. That's all I have to say to Facebook. <laughs> sorry, sorry if that was too much. I'm just playing around. That was, was that aggro, Megan? Megan's saying that's aggro. Rumi's over here eating. Gotta listen to dad cuss out Mark Zuckerberg. Dual streams, yeah. Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and Tastemade. I can show you how you do this way, Brett, if you're interested. You hit up, have a conversation about it. Happy to happy to show you how I got it all working. What about MySpace? Well, I just assumed you knew we were going out on MySpace. That's clear, duh, of course we're going out on MySpace. It's the hub of the internet. Have you guys heard of Dane Cook? You should follow him. For real, Facebook sucks. Yeah, Facebook does suck. It straight up sucks. Okay, everybody, now it's time to make up our tacos. You in taco mode? Taco, taco, taco time. Let's get all the components for our taco out. But not Google Plus. Does Google... They shut down Google Plus, right? Like, it's not even a thing anymore. Megan says yes, yeah, so I'm gonna go with her. Does Dane Cook like to cook? <laughs> oh, man. That's why I should rename the channel Dane Cook. Dane Cooks. Tell everybody my name's Dane. That'd be pretty funny. Would it, though? I think that'd be a lot of effort for a pretty lame joke. Ah. Okay, everybody. Like I said, pairs, three ways. So we've got our fish tacos going down here. These are yellow corn tortillas. I'm going to cut up an avocado real quick. I want to top this with avocado. Mm. This and tacos, oh my God, oh yeah. We're doing the fish tacos and we're doing post red wine syrup pears on top of that, okay? We don't mess around. Oh, and on top of the tacos, did I mention everybody that we made for ourselves a nice little chimichurri sauce? How about that? Mm. I always make extra chimichurri because Kevin and Megan like putting them on their eggs in the morning. And this is how we featured our third, or well, I guess our second use of pears this evening. is gonna be in this Asian pear slaw that we're doing with the fish tacos. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit each taco with just a little bit of slaw. Just enough to fill up the center right there, right? This is the easiest way to plate tacos. Just line up all your tortillas first and then build them like you would a house. Start with the foundation 
and work your way up. Ooh, dad jokes have started, says Kimbara. <laughs> started? They never stopped. Now we've got our fish tacos. This is just mahi-mahi that I simply dressed with some olive oil, salt, and pepper. And then we had we were forced to do these inside, everybody. I'm, I'm sorry, but we had to... Um, we got rained out today. The grill... <laughs> The, the grill that we usually grill on was unfortunately not available to do so. There we go. So that's what we have so far. Just our slaw tortillas and our fish. Let's take a spoon, get some of our avocado on top of this, and then top with our chimichurri. See by cutting that avocado in the skin, how it just comes out all nicely pre-sliced? Just nestle a slice of avocado up next to each one of your fish tacos right here. That's the way to do it. Where's the cod? Do people catch cod with a rod? I mean, I'm sure some people do. Most don't. Cod's like an endangered species now or something, isn't it? They like overfished it. baby. Look at those bad boys. Does it get any better than that? I don't think it does. Here, we're going to do that again. You guys want to taste one? Are you ready? You ready for this? Yeah. Thanks, Hungry Wolf. I appreciate you, man. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Mmm. I got a little temperature hanging out here. Mmm. Yes. A little bit of sweetness from the pear, cut through with the lime juice and the chimichurri sauce and avocado. Mm. This is beautiful. Whew. The smallest cod piece I've ever seen. Sorry, I'm catching up with you guys. Where'd you find yellow masa? I can never find it anymore. Sorry, way bread. I wasn't trying to ignore you. Just getting in the plating and ship. Um, just yellow corn tortillas, I don't know, they show up at the store. You know, you have white corn or yellow corn. I prefer the yellow corn, just like it sounds like you do as well. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I've not had an issue with it. That's weird that you have. Mmm. See, we're working on it. We're, we're working on getting it done, okay? Mm. Whoever Grammy is to come up to. Alrighty, everybody. I promise you push pears. And so it shall be. Over here, we have our pears going in our red wine reduction. Well, it's not a reduction yet, although it is reducing.
Those are going to need to be pulled here momentarily. There's a whole group of Twitch streamers whose channel would explode if we got Spellvision. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there definitely is. Hoping mine would be one of them, although we'll see. All right. Now, the pears that you're seeing down there on the stove, everybody, like I said, I think the pears themselves are done. Uh, so we're gonna pull these out of our poaching liquid over into a bowl. Looking for another slotted spoon. There we go. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. So we're gonna bring these off the stove, everybody. And then just using a slot of spoon so that these drain. Out come each individual pair. Look at that beautiful red color that it takes on. Hmm. Yes, quite happy with this. Now, we need to set this mixture of red wine and sugar that we did earlier. Hope I need tacos soon. Amen. There's a whole group of Twitch. Oh, you already said that. Sorry. I already read that. What is smell vision Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard one yellow thing you should not eat or drink is yellow snow. So true. So, guys, in order to make our red wine syrup, the reduction, we just need to put this pot back on the stove and allow it and allow it to uh, reduce down into a syrupy consistency. That's what, that's what we're looking for. Yes, it is blood. Just blood. Welcome to true blood. So back onto the stove we go. That's gonna come up to a boil and we're gonna have to wait about like 45 minutes for that guy. So hang tight. We're just gonna keep on cooking with you here and let you go. I'm just kidding. Through the magic of television, I've already got some uh, red wine reduction from the other night. And it already has a pear in it. And I already dumped it on the table. Idiot. Do, do, do. Okay. So what we need to do right now, is not do that, is get ourselves uh, a bowl for our ice cream. Because this is, like I said, a la mode. I bought a new ice cream scoop for this, everybody. Ooh, does that look good? Does this look good right here? Okay. So... We got some vanilla ice cream going down right here. Ooh, it's natural vanilla bean, everybody. I knew it. It's not Tuesday. I heard tacos are ate on Tuesdays. If you have an issue, you might need, if you have an issue, you might need a tissue. See, you're, you're putting out all the bangers tonight, see? I gotta say. Some real life advice going on over here, guys. New ice cream scoop. It's made out of bamboo. Who the hell knows why? Mm. Oh yeah, guys. Oh yeah. Don't you know. Now I'm gonna take this pear from last week and get this set on here. Mm. 
Mm. Yes. Well, that was stupid of you, see. Whew! I'm just playing with you. I'm sorry. That's very sad. I don't wish that fate on anybody. Tell you what, everybody. This is my new favorite dessert. I'm so happy with that. Red wine reduction is got to be one of the best things on the planet, especially when it's nice and sweet like that. Oh man, that's good stuff. I prefer whipped cream more than ice cream. I want to be and eat healthier, so I gave up ice cream a few years ago. I thought maybe it was like a dairy sensitivity or something like that. You've never had alcohol, man. What a chaste life you live. <laughs> All right, everybody. We are going to bring this here to a close. We're going to land this plane. I hope that you have enjoyed this afternoon's Wednesday weeknight dinner here on Ingrediology. Again, go follow our YouTube if you haven't done that yet. We're really trying to build up the YouTube channel, everybody. If there's one thing that you could do to help support Ingrediology, it's not monetarily. I'm not asking you to make any of this stuff. Just go over there and hit the subscribe button on YouTube. That'll help pump our numbers, and uh, that's what we really need right now. Now, if you'd like to help us buy groceries, buy equipment, who do website hosting fees, you can do that by hitting exclamation point support down in chat. Uh, that's going to take you over to our Ko-fi webpage, and like I said, helps buy groceries, helps buy new equipment, helps invest in the stream. All that money goes right back into Ingrediology, okay? And thank you to our supporters like Snake Eye DIY, Nicole Rowe, Jose D., Kevin Faulkner, Chris, uh, Captain Jack Daniels, uh, Tef Banow, and there's a few others in there as well who uh, choose to donate to us monthly. So thank you very much. Um, let's see. Uh, of course, guys, you can catch the uh, recipe of this over on ingrediology.org in the coming weeks. I will make sure to have all of these recipes posted from our three-pair dinner uh, before the YouTube video goes up. That way, everybody can revisit it. Look out for our next YouTube video. I'm working on it currently. It is the chicken and waffles video. So we're going to talk a little bit about the history of chicken and waffles. I'm going to show you how to make a simple Belgian waffle, as well as make the crunchiest fried chicken that you ever had in your life. So uh, look forward to that and then do we have somebody to go to not yet who's online who's online oh if you're joining us on YouTube and Facebook we are getting ready to raid out here on Twitch but have yourselves a good evening everybody else we are gonna go to BB bubs so uh, bubs is online love this dude he is a fantastic chef out of Las Vegas Nevada right now so Please enjoy slash oh slash <laughs> I put raid. Is that all right? Hey, we're all set to go. All right, guys. We'll see you back for another Wednesday weeknight dinner here in two weeks on Ingrediology. We're taking next week off, but I will see you the week after next. And uh, I'm really excited about what we're going to be making. You'll see it then, okay? But hey, thank you for the follow. You guys are amazing. But yeah, be easy and say hi to Bubsy for me. Send all my love. Peace.